happen here? And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight for just a little while. As we go into 2016. I feel like the word for this year, and I don't want to say, I feel it's greater. I feel it's, it's hashtag greater. Hashtag greater. Hashtag greater. You know, everything in the kingdom of God is, should be increasing all the time. And, and as we exit 2015 and go into 2016, we're all the time reflecting and thinking. But God is really not on a calendar. Do you understand that, right? It's not like that January 31st, you know, at 12 or January 1st, you know, like, like God changes and from January 30th. No, he's the same God. But he is doing something increasing in us. And I want all of us to believe for next year that greater. Amen. Let's believe God for greater in our lives. Greater for our church. Greater, greater, greater in every aspect. Greater in our marriages. Greater in our relationships. Greater in our finances. Greater, greater. I was so stirred Sunday morning as, as, as Mike was up here and he gave that call for anybody that needed a financial miracle, stand up. And nobody stood up. I wanted to stand up and applaud. That means why God's meeting your need and giving you more than enough. That God's doing what he said he would do and he would bless you and help you. Greater. Hashtag greater. John, John chapter 14. I don't even know how I'm going to even do this tonight. I'm just being honest with you. I've got a bunch of stuff just typed out. John 14. Everything in the Christian life should be greater. In John chapter 14. Thinking about this verse. It says this. Jesus speaking. says, Most assuredly I say to you. He who believes in me. The works that I do. He will do what? Also. And what? What's the next? And what? And greater. You guys are used to that being up on the screen, aren't you? And greater works, greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Jesus said, what? You're going to do greater. Mediocrity, mediocre, just barely getting along is not in the, that's not the kingdom. That's not kingdom thinking. It's not kingdom mindset. That may be religious thinking. But everything in the kingdom of God should be increasing. Listen, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the apostle wrote, and he said, listen, uh, uh, God has no pleasure in people that draw back. There's no place. Anything in the kingdom is not going backwards. It's going forwards. God is doing a good work in you. In 2016, it's greater. Believing for greater. How can you say that, Pastor Paul? Because John 10.10. 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life. And what? Greater. Greater. It, said, it says in Acts chapter 2 that God added to the church daily those that would be saved. Greater. God's into addition. God's into multiplication, not subtraction. If it's subtracting from you, it's not God. Come on. He believes in greater. So everything in the Christian life should be greater. So this time of the year, we're all reflecting on the past year and setting goals and aspirations for the new year. I want us all to be thinking about this word. Greater. Greater. The kingdom of God is increasing. Now go with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. <clears throat> now don't shout me down now because I'm preaching good. Verse 31. Another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. 
which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it's what? Greater. Increase. When it's grown, it is greater than the herbs and, the, and becomes a tree, so the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Another parable he spoke to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like what? Leaven, which a man took and hid in three measures of meal, till it was all what? Leaven. Greater. Increase. He said the kingdom of God is a progressive increase. A progressive increase. It's always increasing. If you are not increasing, then you need to check up. I'm not talking about salvation. You need to check up because the kingdom in you is increasing. The kingdom around you is increasing. God is wanting to do greater. We just have to cooperate with it. We just got to cooperate. If you notice, where was the leaven hit at? It was hidden what? Three measures of meal. It's interesting. Three measures of meal. What are you? You are a spirit that lives in a body and possesses a soul. Spirit, soul, and body. See, the kingdom of God gets in you first. In your heart. And it begins to leaven the mind. And then the, begins to leaven from the mind. It begins to leaven the, the body and the actions. Which begins to leaven the world. This is how the kingdom of God is to operate. So we wonder why stuff is not happening. Listen, revival. You are the revival. Come on, that's good. You are revival. The problem is, is that I believe that believers aren't leavened. If you got leaven, you got to go put leaven in an environment. In, for, in order for it to begin to work. You just, you can't go put leaven in a, in a refrigerator. It's got to be exposed to heat. It's got to be exposed to the environment. So the problem is, you know why there's so much darkness? It's because the church is not leavening the world. Come on somebody, are you with me here? This is how the kingdom of God should work. It progressively begins to take over everything. That's why it's getting bad out there. Listen, it's not bad for the church. We ought to be getting more. We ought to have greater. We ought to be operating in greater. Are you guys with me? Greater. Greater. So it works by increasing. I put down here, maybe the problem we are having in the world today is the church has shut off the leavening process. So they're not leavening the world. Let me give you this one. John chapter 3 verse 30. John the Baptist says, He must increase and I must. So anytime Jesus is involved in anything, it's always increasing. Come on somebody. Do you know why this property's been paid? You know why we're debt free on this property? That's right. Amen. Because Jesus has been a part of it. Amen. Come on. How do we know that God's in this place and doing things here? Because Jesus is here. And anytime Jesus is here, increase. Maybe the problem with our lives, our lives, if we're not increasing, it's because I'm in the way. He must increase and I must. We always, we always in the church, we always um, sort of um, uh, major on the decreasing. And I understand that. But I'm trying to get you to understand something tonight. tonight. Whenever Jesus is involved in anything, there's increase involved. So, well, Pastor Paul, I don't know about all that tithing stuff. Do what the Bible tells you to do because Jesus is in it. He's in it. Keep doing it. Why? Because he must increase. Anything he's involved in, it's going to what? Increase. Amen. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, and the kingdom of God is like leaven. So the kingdom operates by laws. How can you have a kingdom and not have laws? It doesn't work that way. Anytime there's a kingdom, there has to be laws associated with that kingdom. 
<clears throat> let me break this down to you. Let me get something to drink here real quick. <clears throat> let me break this down for you a second. In order to have a kingdom, you got to have a what? A king. What else you got to have? Subjects. Very good. What else you got to have? Got to have a king. Got to have a subject. Subjects. You got to have a region to rule in. Okay, a kingdom itself. What else you got to have? Okay, you got to have laws. You got to have a military. If you want to have a kingdom, better have a military. The kingdom of God is just like that, spiritually. There's laws. There's subjects. There's a region. There's realms. A realm to rule in. There's a military called the army of God. There's a real enemy that's trying to go and steal things and kill and destroy. So the kingdom operates by certain laws. So it's up to me and you to get a part of the system and begin to cooperate with the laws that God has set forth. All right. Now, you say, well, Pastor Paul, what are you talking about the kingdom? The kingdom of God. Let me give you a brief definition of what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is the king's domain. It's, it's the influence of Christ first on the hearts of men that influences man with his characteristics, his nature, his behavior, which in turn begins to affect the reality. The kingdom of God is first within you and I. Go with me to Luke chapter 17 real quick. I'm, what am I talking about tonight? I'm talking about what? greater I'm talking about increase <coughs> Luke chapter 7 actually it's 17 sorry Luke 17 I'm getting a little ahead of myself but I want you to see this look what it says here in verse 20 now when, he asked by the, now, now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Doesn't come by observation, but look what he says. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is where? It's within you. So the kingdom is an unseen reality. It's what he's saying. Is it doesn't come with observation. The kingdom is on the inside of you. But the kingdom begins to manifest around you and in this world through the believer. So first the kingdom is a step. When you got born again, the kingdom of God came on the inside of you. The king's rule, the king's domain. His spirit came on the inside of you. Now his characteristic and his nature is on the inside of you. And if you and I begin to let the... Let, let the kingdom begin to leaven our thinking. It begins to be demonstrated on the outside. And all of a sudden, the kingdom of God begins to rule in regions and areas. Are you with me here? So listen, if the believer will not, will not believe for greater, if they'll just settle out for mediocrity and just settle out to come to church, come on, and not let the kingdom of God leaven their thinking, We begin to be, continue to be ruled and dominated, nominated by darkness. The light is covered. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, no. I'm going to let it shine. What's that? What's that? Don't let Satan, what? It out. I'm going to let it, he can't, he can't, that's, that's really wrong. He can never blow out the light. Sorry. Let's just, let's just set that theologically correct. He will, dark, listen, light will never be overcome by darkness ever. But if you and I don't let it leaven our thinking, that's why Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's with you, it's now, it's here. He said, you've got to change the way you think. Repent means to change the way, the way you think. Why are you saying this, Pastor Paul? Because if we're going to believe for greater, we've got to get our mind out of the basement and back to the penthouse. Come on, somebody. Repent. Go back to the top. Go back to the place that you can see again. 
Come on, I'm here watching the Travel Channel and all of a sudden people throwing down $5,000 for a, for a hamburger. And I thought $9 at, at Five Guys was bad. <laughs> That's a good hamburger though. Are you, I'm, I'm being serious. They're throwing down G's like it's no big deal. I got to begin to think. I was challenged. I was sitting there. And I was sitting there watching. I was on my couch sitting there watching. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, I don't want you to have a poverty mentality. Come on. What was he saying? You got to let the kingdom begin to leaven the way you think. You are royalty. Come on. You have destiny. Am I making sense to you? I'm talking about greater. 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 So the kingdom of God is living. This is the way the kingdom works. Remember Genesis chapter 2. Remember God told Adam. He said the day that you eat. You're going to what? You're going to surely die. The actual translation is dying you will die. Dying you will die. Eden was an area. God placed man in Eden. And he said, Adam, I want you to make the whole world look just like Eden. Multiply and fill this earth greater. Everything God does is always about increase. Anything God's a part of there's increase. The kingdom. I'm not so much. Listen, I'm not talking about just money or numbers. I'm talking about this is the nature of the kingdom of God is to increase. And that na the kingdom of God is in you. It's on the inside of you. So inside of you, you have a push to go greater. The only person that's stopping you from being greater is you. That's it. You say, well, I'd like to be this way spiritually. Then go for it. I'd like to do this. Then go for it. I'd like to go back to school. Go for it. Come on. Come on. Everything about you is about increase and forward. Your feet point forward for a reason. Why? Because you're made to increase. Your eyes are on the front of your, your eyeballs are in the front of your head for a reason. Because why? You're meant to go forward and increase. Your very makeup. Look how we're born. Babies, growth, increase. Come on, somebody. Find this scripture. This is a good one. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. This just came to me. Verse 1. And make it in the uh, Message Bible. I love this. I love this. <clears throat> we'll, we'll let her pull it up here. A good reputation is better than a fat bank account. Now, your death date tells more than your birth date. Your, your death date, why? Because you ought to be increasing. Just, just for giggles, go to verse 2. It's great. You learn more at a funeral than at a feast. Because why? Your life is supposed to be counting for something. And when a baby's born, it's just starting. Your life should be increasing. I don't want us to settle out in this church and be complacent. Come on, it's time to go greater. What does it look like for greater excellence in this church? What does it look like for greater excellence in our children's ministry? What does it look like for excellence in greater excellence in our youth ministry? What does it look like for our ushers to go greater and be greater? Worship greater. Preaching greater. The power of God, which is the only thing that really matters, and the presence of God greater. That will, that will host the Holy Spirit well. That will host Him well. That will, what, that will host the Holy Ghost well when he comes greater. 
Everything should be greater. And this church is. Well, look where we've come from. It's a progressive, greater, greater. God told Moses, he's everywhere you put your, every place that, you, that your feet treads, I'm going to give it to you. Greater, greater. What's it going to look like for greater in your family this year? Greater in your marriage, greater. You and I need to believe God. God, I'm believing you for 2016 to be greater. Just greater. Greater peace. Greater love. Greater joy. Greater long suffering. Well, we don't want to pray that one, do we? Greater. 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 Everything about it. Listen. When Adam sinned in the garden, the Bible says the whole human race was injected with the contagion of sin. Because why? Everything that Adam was made was to go global. Even in his sin, it affected the globe. It affected the whole world. We're made to be greater. Are you guys with me? Are you with me? Now, let me show you this one. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. <clears throat> We get, we have, we've quoted this a lot the last few weeks because it's been Christmas. Now look. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. Now let me stop here a minute. The kingdom rests upon where? Where does it rest at? Upon whose? Upon his what? Jesus is the head of... And the church is the body. So the kingdom rests upon the body. We carry the kingdom. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7, which we're going to major in. Of the increase. Notice what it says. What? That what? Greater. Of his what? Government. Or his kingdom. And peace. There will be no what? The kingdom of God is great. The increase of his kingdom and peace. There will be no end. Where's this, where's this kingdom at? It's in you, Scott. It's on the inside of me. So the there will be no end to this increase. The God's, God's power, God's anointing, it's in you. It's greater there's an increasing kingdom. So what's God up to today? You know what he's up to today? Increasing. There's more glory right now being manifested in the earth than ever before. Come on, quit listening to everything the news tells you. And what Facebook, please, let's not believe every single thing you see on social media. You've got to know that's Bible. It's on, it's on social media, it's got to be the Bible. There's more glory being revealed in the earth than ever before. Come on. You go back a hundred years, I don't know what the mortality rate was a um, hundred years ago, but I guarantee you it's not 85. I think women now is 83 years old and, and men are like 78 years old. What was the mortality rate then? 40, 50? What's happened? Increase. Look at all the things that's happened in science. It's showing you the glory of God's being manifested more and more and more. Think about the evolution of the internet. There's people tonight that's watching. 200,000 minutes has been viewed from this church. On the internet. It's greater glory. Let me throw something out to you. Everybody talks about the end times. It's going to get worse and worse. Maybe it's going to get better and better. I'm just giving you a food for thought. Because actually the day actually started in the evening. 
Genesis chapter 1. And the, and the evening and the day. Or evening and the morning were what? You moved from darkness to what? I'm just making a point. The path of the just. or Proverbs 4. The path of the just is like a shining light. That shines greater and more and more into the perfect day. What I'm saying is, is church, listen, you can believe everything about, you can believe the stuff about the economy and how everybody's doing this and this is going, you can believe that if you want to, but it does not determine who God is. God is increasing. Amen. I'm not here to debate about, about you know, I, I don't want you to think that, I mean, about end time stuff and how things are going, I don't, I, I understand all that. I get it. But at the end of the day, for the church, it's getting better. We're increasing. We're increasing. What are you going to believe God for increase in your life this 2016? I'm asking you guys a question. What are you going to believe God for to be greater in your life in 2016? Maybe you need to increase in your love walk. Maybe you need to increase in your faith walk. Maybe you need increase in peace, increase in finances, increase in your relationships. I don't know what you need. But notice, go back up at Isaiah again. Notice what, what accompanies the increase of his government. The increase of his government or his kingdom produces shalom. Hebrew word, peace, shalom. Uh -oh, hold on, I know we've done this, but let me just give you again what the word shalom means. Wholeness, harmony, security, well-being, prosperity. It's an all-inclusive word that means health, wealth, welfare, and nothing missing and nothing broken. This is what this word means. So if I want peace or shalom in my life, what needs to happen? There needs to be an increase of his what? His government or his kingdom in my life. See, you, Jesus can be Lord of your, Jesus can be your Savior, but not be Lord in your life. And there could be areas in our life that we're deficient in because why? We've not made Jesus Lord of that. Let's think about finances a second. <clears throat> think about your finances. Maybe you're, you're struggling with your finances. I'm asking you a question tonight. Are you making Jesus Lord in that area? Because if there's an increase of his kingdom or his rule or his dominion, peace will go with that. Well, I, you know what? I need an increase here. Have you made Jesus Lord of that area? Because with the increase of his government, there'll be an increase of his shalom. Am I making sense to you guys? What do we believe in God for? Greater. 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 Hashtag greater. Greater. Greater, 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 greater. Everything that God does is about increase. We move from glory to glory. We move from faith to faith. Level to level. Level to level. There should never ever be a decrease in our life. Now I'm not trying to condemn anybody. But the only reason that you won't be increasing is because you are in the way. He must increase, you must what? If you'll get out of the way and let Jesus be Lord of your life, it'll automatically happen. Because anything that Jesus is involved in, there's increase. There's increase. Look at this one, Psalm 115. You guys all right? Thanks for bearing with me with my voice. Ah, oh, I love this scripture. This is so awesome. It says the Lord has been mindful of us. That's covenant language. When it talks about God remembering, it's always he's remembering covenant. Listen, if it, was, if it wasn't for Jesus, none of you, you, and I, you, you we are insignificant without him. My, my life is, listen, God has covenant with his son. And because of that, I'm in covenant with God. 
The Lord has been mindful of us. Now notice what he said. He will what? Bless us. What's that word bless means? It means to empower you to prosper and to increase. The word bless. He will empower us to prosper and to increase. That's what the word bless means. He will empower you to prosper and increase. He will bless us. Now, I love this. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. Man, God's just a blesser. Amen. Touch your neighbors. He's a blesser. Just, look, just touch your neighbor and say, bless your heart. <laughs> Verse 13. He will bless those in power to prosper and to increase. Those who what? Fear God. Make him Lord. Government increased. Both what? I love that. Both small and great. It'll work for the smallest child. It'll work for the oldest human being. Come on, it'll, it'll work for the person that's born on that side of the tracks and the person that's born on this side of the tracks. Come on, it will work for Buffalo. It will work for Eleanor. It will work for Winfield. It does, small and great. It doesn't matter because God wants to increase you. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. Verse 14, may the Lord give you what? Increase greater. You and your. Come on. Now, now, now we're talking generationally now. God just don't want to just stop with you. He wants to bless your kids. He wants to bless your kids' kids. He wants to bless your kids' kids' kids. And bless your kids' 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 kids. And bless your kids' 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 kids. God is a blesser, not a curser. He's not decreasing us. He's increasing us. Get your mind off money. That's part of it. About an increase in peace in our life. Increase in our marriages. Come on. Greater love in our home. Our kids following the Lord. That's greater. That's increase. You can have all the money in the world and be the most miserable person in the world. You can have all the money in the world and be broke. Without Jesus, I'm broke anyway. He increases more and more. Verse 15. May you be, and this whole scripture about bless, 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 bless. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Bless, bless, bless. God wants to empower you to prosper and to increase in everything. But you got to work with the kingdom. The kingdom of God is like leaven. It's put in three measures of meal until the whole is leavened. Until everything is permeated by that yeast. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. A mustard seed. A small, but it becomes greater. Where's that kingdom at? It's in us. And if it's in me, it's increasing. Pastor Paul, I'm not where I used to be. I'm not, I, I'm not where I used to be either, but I'm certainly not where I'm going to be. Pastor Paul, it's been a bad 2015. Leave it behind. I'm going to show you this real quick. I'm going to close. Go to Philippians chapter 3. God is a blesser. Philippians chapter 3. Oh, there's no school tonight. That means I can preach till 10 tonight. Amen. amen. I heard Kenny say, praise God. Hallelujah. John Davis said, amen. Look at this. This is for all of you guys that's had a hard 2015. Verse 10. This is the, I love this passage of scripture. The Apostle Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Two-thirds. Was caught up into the third heaven. Saw unspeakable things they couldn't even talk about. Come on. Damascus Road experience saw. Come on. And look at what he says. That I may know him. 
pray that for all of us tonight. That we would have that same desire. No, no matter how much we've done for the Lord, or no matter how much, how much we've had experience with God, or how many scriptures we've read, or how many hours we've prayed, that we would all have that desire that we would know Him. If anybody knew God, it was the Apostle Paul. But he was still crying out that I may know Him. I loved it. Did anybody see that on Facebook? About, I po- reposted it yes, last night because I was just stirred. About the, 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 real, the real lady, the real Miss Claire, the war room. Remember that war room? They talked to the lady. She was nine, She died in June. 91 years old. Go watch it. It stirs. It stirs you. But she said this. She said, they said, Miss Claire, are you afraid? This is what they asked her. Well, well, her name was Molly, wasn't it? Molly, are you afraid to die? Her face lit up and said, Oh, no. Because I'm going to go and I'm going to love Jesus. She cried out daily to know him. 2016, Father, right now I'm praying, God, that we'll have those same desire in our heart. That we would know you. That we'd be intimate. That we would gnosko you. I pray that, God, as we enter into this new year. In Jesus' name. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. The fellowship of his suffering. Being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But the one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal. I press towards the prize. The goal for the prize of the high corner, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul talking about that I may attain the resurrection of the dead. What was he talking about? He said, I'm in a perfection. See, your salvation is actually three tenths. It's past, it's present, and it's future. Your salvation is, is past. You've been justified. January 31st, 1997, whatever your birth date is, into the kingdom. But also our salvation is present tense. There's sanctification. There's justification. And then there's sanctification. That's the process of me becoming more like Jesus. Me walking with God and looking more like him. As the world falls off. And the glory begins to grow greater and brighter in my life. But also there's a a future tense. Which is the glorification. Which is when our body will be resurrected. And we'll have a brand new body. The apostle Paul said listen. I know I'm in a process. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm not there yet. Write these three things down. If we're going to move into 2016, there's an invitation to greater. Notice what he says in verse 14. I press toward the goal. Verse 14, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You see that word call right there? See that word upward call? That word call means invitation. Listen, 2016. He's given us all an invitation to go higher. He says an invitation for me to go. An invitation for me. Number two. There's an inventory to greater. There's an invitation. Number two, there's an inventory. If you notice what he says in verse 13, he said, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. He said, I'm not there yet. I'm not where I used to be. Thank God, but I'm not where I'm going to be. He said, I've not apprehended this thing. I've not got it all together yet. I haven't arrived yet. The hardest thing in the kingdom of God is this. To have a dissatisfied or a sanctified 
dissatisfied. Is that wrong? A sanctified dissatisfaction. Resting and very thankful for where I'm at in Jesus, but yet staying hungry. How, how do you eat, but yet still stay hungry? How do we do this in the kingdom? We, we eat, but how we, how we increase hunger in the kingdom is actually by, by eating. The more you eat, the more you become hungry. So I have to, there's an inventory. What, what are you saying, Pastor Paul? I'm saying this. You've got to have a, 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 dis, a, a, a sanctified dissatisfaction about your life. That I'm, satisfied, I'm sanctified, I'm satisfied in Jesus. He's enough. Jesus is enough. But there's work to be done in all of our lives. You've got to take inventory. The apostle Paul was given inventory. He said, one thing that I do. What's he say? He said, I'm forgetting what's behind me. And I'm pressing forward to those things before me. He was taking inventory. I'm asking you a question tonight. Look back at 2015. And whatever it is that hindered you, that bothered you, I want you to wave bye-bye to that. It's gone. You can't change it if you wanted to. So let it go. Let it go. One thing, one thing, I'm going to tell you something, burn the bridges tonight. Cut it loose. Take inventory, what is it? If it's bitterness, cut it off. If it's bad choices, then let's get it right in 2016. Come on. If you're harboring unforgiveness, let it go. So first, first thing is a what? It's an invitation. Number two, it's an inventory. And the third and final thing is this. I'm done. It's an investment to greater. There's an invitation. There's an inventory time to greater. But also, there's an investment to greater. None of this stuff is going to fall on you like ripe cherries off of a tree. It's not going to happen. So I want greater for my life, then it's going to take greater from you. It's going to take, it's going to take sacrifice. Everybody wants a Christianity with no sacrifice. Don't make, no, 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 don't ask me to serve. I'm not serving. Are you kidding me? This is, this is, this is the mentality of, of the church. This is the mentality of, of the body of Christ. We want greater? It's called an investment in the kingdom. Listen to me. Matthew 25. I've got to walk away. Can I give you that one? Uh, Matthew 25, probably around... I don't know, maybe verse 7. I don't know. Let's see. I got it right down somewhere. Maybe around. Um, I was right. About verse 14. I was going to say 13. So, verse 14. Look what it says. For the kingdom of heaven. Now see it's talking about the kingdom of God. Is like. So he's going to begin to compare with the kingdom of God. This thing that's increasing. What it's like. It's like a man traveling to a far country. Who called his own servants. And delivered to him his goods. Now notice. Whose goods are they? It wasn't, it wasn't the servants goods. It was his goods. Verse 15, 
And to the one he gave five, to another two, to another one, to each according to his what? See, God knows what you can handle. So I don't have much. Oh, yeah, this is what this one guy said. How can you call what you have little when it was given to you by God? You can't do that. It's not even your goods. It's not even your goods. It's God's goods. Five, two, and one, according to their own ability, and immediately went on his journey. Verse 16. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another what? Five talents. Verse 17. And likewise, he who had received two gained what? Verse 18. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Hid his talent. Hid his ability. Well, it's just one. The dude, if he would have invested it, he would have got another one. And then if he kept investing it, the one guy finally becomes a ten-talent dude. What are you saying, Pastor Paul? I'm saying there's sacrifice and investment in the kingdom. And the way that you advance in the kingdom of God is by investing your life. Whatever little you have or much you have, it's, listen, it's invested. Sacrifice. And invest it in the kingdom. And God begins to multiply it. Well, so man, you know what? I just got a little bit of tithe. A little bit of tithe. A tithe is a great equalizer. If it's five or 500, it's still the tithe. I really can't do much, but I could do this in the church. Just, I don't know if I... I'll just dig, I'll just, I'll just dig. I don't want, I don't want to use the talent. Surely they wouldn't need that there. Am I making sense to you? It's investments. And listen, all you guys that are children's church workers, I know that's hard back there. I understand. But you're investing in the kingdom. When you have to come for meetings, that we don't get a whole lot of support out of a lot of times. Invest your life. Listen, the stuff we're watching on television, well, I can't miss my miss this or that and the other. I can't miss the voice. Surely I can't miss them. Are you kidding me? This is the kingdom of God. Amen. Investing your life. And God begins to multiply. Tell me, the 30 years, 30 some years you've been investing your life in the kingdom. Look, oh, you say, well, I don't, I don't know about all that. Listen, you be faithful, God will multiply it. Let me show you this. I'm done, I promise. Go to verse um, 24, verse 24. Look, look, look. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. He had no idea who the, who the father was. See, you have fear and you won't invest if you won't know the heart of the father. The Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you've not sown and gathering where you've not scattered. Anytime you've got fear, you won't invest. Verse 25. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Next verse. But his Lord, Lord answered and said, you wicked and lazy servant. When you go and look at your stuff as being small in the kingdom, the Bible calls that wicked. If you're not investing in your life, the Bible calls that wicked. And we can't get people to get up on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday to church. Don't get mad at me. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good now. There's no condemnation, but I'm just telling you. There's an investment in the kingdom. You wicked and lazy servant, you know that I reap where I have not sown. Notice he didn't say anything about being a hard man. That was what he said. That wasn't the heart of the Father. And gather where I have not scattered seed. Verse 27, look what happened. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. At least you could have put it in the bank for me. That's what he was saying. At least you could have put it in the COD. 
What's that getting now, Sheila? What's that getting? What's that getting now, <laughs> Ange? Not much, but it would have been something. Right? Verse 28. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has what? Increase. Because someone was faithful to do what they needed to do with their, with their, with their talent that the Lord had given them. What happened? He took it and gave it. Because why? Anybody that's faithful what God has given, he'll always increase it. Always. He's a good father. Are you with me here? So, so listen, we should go in 2016. Number one. There's a what? There's an invitation. To go greater. To press. To go into that high calling. Number two, it's a what? There's an inventory that needs to happen. Amen? What do you need to leave behind in 15 and not carry over into 16? There's something special about this time of the year. We are doing these types of things. You're turning new pages, turning over a new leaf. Doing, leave it behind. But also, there is a what? There's an investment to greater. I'm leaving you with this right here. Close your Bibles. I'm done. Find it. Don't sit there and talk about me now. I got to find it. I don't know if I wrote down or not. Yeah. God never asks you to give up anything. Or invest into anything if there's not a return on it. You can believe God for your finances, church. You're a tither and giver. You can believe God for your finances. God would never ask you to give a tithe if he wasn't going to multiply it back to you. What's he need it for? His streets are paved with gold. He wants greater. He wants greater. So we say, well, Pastor Paul, I don't. What do you need greater in? What do you need greater in tonight? Then start investing in that area. Because whatever you invest into increases. Whatever you don't invest, to, invest into, it what? Decreases. Am I making sense to you guys? So we're believing for hashtag what? Greater. Hashtag greater. Greater. So God, tonight we just want greater. So I'm pushing you over into 2016. For greater. We're going greater for the church. Greater. I want greater for my life. I want to. I want to. I want to operate in greater revelation. I believe 2016 is going to be a great year for the church, for the body of Christ. I believe that. I believe, man, things are. We got momentum behind us. We got things going on. Glory to God. Get fired up. Come in here, man. Every service. Is, glory to God. We're gonna have greater glory, greater power, greater manifestations. Come on. Greater in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Greater healings. Greater salvations. Come on. Greater. Greater. Greater and increase in every area of our life. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Thanks for letting me preach. I'm 15 minutes over. I promise I'll do better next week. I will be better next week. Because the kids, I, have, I do pretty good at that. Now you've got to say I do pretty good at that. If the Lord doesn't change, i got a good message for next week called Joe Encouragement. So I want you to come. It's going to be good. Hallelujah. How many believe for greater? How many believe for greater? How many believe for greater? Father, right now, we just extend our hands to you right now. Hallelujah. Greater, 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 greater. Greater, greater, greater. Greater expressions of worship. Greater expressions in our worship. Greater glory. Greater glory. Greater glory. Greater glory. 
greater power. Greater. Greater. Greater, greater, greater. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to take inventory right now in your life. Take inventory. Take inventory. What are you leaving in 2015? What are you going to leave behind? What are you taking over into 2016? Things that's good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We take inventory right now. Take inventory right now, oh God. greater and those things that you don't want to take over in there I want you to cut them off right now leave them in the past the hurt the pain discouragement that's it that's it discouragement right now you're leaving that behind in 2016 you're going to live in courage lives you're going to be known as Joe encouragement Joe, encourage me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Good year. Increase and greater. Increase and greater. I just hear the Lord keep saying discouragement. Leave it in the past. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Thank you, Jesus. Be encouraged. We thank you, Father, for that investment. Lord, we're going to invest in 2016 like we've never invested. Making investments, sacrificing, 